Welcome back to Who's to Know. So today I am making some homemade granola. It is one of our favorite snacks at home. My husband absolutely loves it and he is pretty picky about the exact ingredients of granola. He really enjoys just granola that is just sweetened with honey or maple syrup and not with a ton of brown sugar or refined sugars. So when I, so I just started making it at home because it is super expensive to find granola that is very lightly sweetened, has really good ingredients, and is minimally processed. And so to make it at home is really inexpensive and it is even better than what you can buy in the store. It keeps for a long time. It makes a great snack, a great breakfast. So I wanted to show you how I make it. Um, I have tried a bunch of different recipes over the years. And this is the simplest one that I have found where I, and it's very forgiving. I can change the ingredients based on what I've got on my shelf. Um, I had made a recipe, I had used a recipe years ago called Real Food Granola, and it was delicious and made a ton, but it called for so many different ingredients that I constantly felt like I was running out of something and had to go to the store more often. So it is a very good recipe, but you do have to keep more things on hand. Um, it was also a little bit higher in fat just because it did have more nuts and seeds in it. And so this one is a little heavier on the oats, so it's a little cheaper to make. It's also just a little bit lower in fat because it doesn't have quite as many nuts and seeds in it. Um, the recipe itself doesn't call for that many, that much variety, um, but like I said, I just sort of substitute what I've got, substitute it with what I've got on my shelf at that moment. And it has worked just fine. I've not had a batch not come out yet. So let me show you how we start with that. So I get a nice big metal bowl and I start with that on the side of my cutting board. So the recipe calls for five cups of old fashioned rolled oats. So any brand will do, nothing super fancy. So measure out five. And then I've got a blend today of just some little odds and ends of nuts and other fillers around here. The recipe originally calls for two cups of whole almonds chopped and then you add some dried fruit at the end. But my husband does like it a little more bulked up than that. So I've got some pumpkin seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do about, about three quarters of a cup of pumpkin seeds. And if I wind up adding quite a bit more filler, then I'll just increase the liquid level a little bit. Um, I've got some sunflower seeds, and I'm just gonna do maybe a half a cup of sunflower seeds. And I do, um, when I can find them, I do raw. Um, and if I can't find them raw at the store that I'm at, then I will just go ahead and try to get unsalted. So you can often find them roasted, but unsalted. Um, I've got some coconut chips, which are just a little bit different than shredded coconut. These tend to be unsweetened and they're just bigger pieces, but shredded coconut is absolutely fine. If you're going for, if, you're, if you don't really care about the sugar and the calories, then you can get sweetened coconut. If you're going, if you really are trying to watch the amount of sugar that you're eating, then the unsweetened is definitely a great flavor without adding a lot of sugar. So I did about a cup of that. It's so fluffy. It doesn't really need a whole lot. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of that filler space. I've got some cashews. So I'm going to go ahead and do some cashews and I'm just going to chop those up. And now with chopped nuts, one of the things that you have to be careful about is just that they don't roll around too much and that you keep your fingers out of the way because they can roll, especially almonds. I'll be chopping up a few almonds here in a minute and they do tend to roll around. They're a little harder and so you just have to be careful. Um, so I'm doing cashews and almonds today. Peanuts would be really good if you have peanuts and enjoy them. Um, again, I would go with unsalted just because it can make it too salty. Um, I also have done, I've just bought pre-sliced almonds before and those are really good. Um, they're, they still have the skins on them, but they are sliced pretty thin so they get nice and toasted 
and they are a great addition when you can find them for a fairly inexpensive price. It's really not a whole lot different than buying the whole almonds. Pretty much everything you want to try to get raw if possible when you're making granola because you are going to be cooking it in the oven. And so you don't want you don't want it to be get too toasted when it's in the oven. So it's not a huge deal if some of your items are already cooked, already roasted. You just have to kind of keep an eye on them. So this is equal to about three quarters of a cup chopped. And I do like to measure it once it's chopped so that I do know how much space it's gonna take up. So I'm gonna do like a handful and a half of almonds. And when I start chopping the almonds, I like to start with just a few and sort of try to make sure they're flat and that they're being held in place. And you can start to, to gradually just sort of feed, feed more almonds in as you're chopping. When you're chopping, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your fingers curled like this. So that way, if, you, if your knife accidentally hits, it kind of grazes off of your fingernails. If you have your fingers like this, it's much easier to actually cut your fingers, especially if you start going a little faster. So I always keep my fingers curled like this so you can still hold your food in place like that, but it's you're putting your fingers at a much lower risk. You are gonna have some almonds fly around, and that is totally fine. Any recipe that you find for granola, um, it's gonna vary in the ingredients. You can look up so many different recipes. They do not have to be, um, they do not have to be as, all natural whole foods as the one that I'm making is. They can have things like corn syrup if you don't care about that. Um, they can have things like brown sugar or white sugar. Um, this is just what my husband really prefers and I have learned over the years not to really even experiment with other ones that have brown sugar in them because <laughs> he's very sensitive to sugar and so um, it just does not actually do him a service for me. To make it as delicious as it might be. Something else that can be really good that I like to do is in the liquid ingredients, I will add some essential oils sometimes. I've got orange essential oil, which can be really, really good, especially if you're using pecans. Orange pecan is delicious, and you can do dried cranberries. Um, you can do, I have done I add cinnamon a lot of the time. I probably will add just maybe a little, a teaspoon or two of cinnamon just because it does add some extra flavor. Um, but it is not necessary. You can just go with very basic, clean ingredients and it will still be really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this out. And it's equaling almost exactly a cup, which is great. So we've gone approximately a cup over in the bulk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I'm going to see what the consistency is like. As long as it's wet enough, it will be fine. So here we've got, this is half a cup of honey. You can also do maple syrup and half a cup of vegetable oil. I use canola oil. And then the recipe calls for four teaspoons of vanilla extract. And because it's a lower sugar recipe, that's why it's calling for more flavoring. So most recipes would not call for quite that much. This is homemade vanilla extract as that I was experimenting with. But store-bought is perfectly fine. It's actually cheaper to make your own and it's not hard at all. But, and I use it a lot, so that's why I tried making my own. You can buy the vanilla beans online. So we've got all of our ingredients in here. I'm gonna grab some cinnamon, just because it is so delicious. And I'm gonna just, because my teaspoon is dirty, I'm just gonna tap in approximately two teaspoons of cinnamon into that. And you wanna add that to your dry ingredients so that you can get it nice and mixed around. So then you just use a spatula or a spoon. I like the spatula because then I can, I'm only dirtying one utensil and I can, easily scrape everything out once I've got it mixed together and I'm putting it on my cookie sheet. 
So I've got our liquid ingredients in here. And just pour it. You can also use coconut oil if you like that. It has some great health benefits, but you do have to melt that first where it's not gonna mix up as easily. So just mixing this around and you just wanna get it, sometimes I'll sort of push on it, especially with the honey, it's a little bit thicker. And so I'm just pushing on it to make sure that I'm getting all of the oats coated in that oil and honey mixture. Oh, it smells so good. That cinnamon is an amazing addition. It's just one little touch, but it changes everything. So everything is nice and mixed together. Looks like it's wet enough, and so we did not add too much filler. So now we've got a rimmed baking sheet. We always called these jelly roll pans growing up. Really, it's just called a half of a sheet pan. Um, and it has a, an edge on it, which I do recommend, especially with recipes where you're gonna be sort of pressing it down. And then parchment paper. And you wanna be able to um, have the parchment paper because otherwise, because of the honey, it's gonna stick to the sides. So we're gonna dump this on here. Make sure we scrape everything out. And then I am going to take a flat bottom spatula. You could use a spoon if you don't have something like this. And you just spread it out. And then this recipe specifically says to press it down. So just spread it over the whole thing. This recipe is very low maintenance because you don't stir it at any point while you're cooking it. A lot of granola recipes will call for stir every 15 minutes, um, which is fine, but that's actually what I really love about this recipe is that it is very low maintenance. I just put it in the oven and let it cook, let it bake until it is done, and then I break it up at the end. I'm gonna put it in an oven at 325 degrees, and um, bake it for about 40 minutes. So I check on it at 40, and then I add time if it's not brown enough, but you just want it to be golden brown on top. So come back when this is all baked. Okay, so we baked this for 40 minutes at 325. It is really nice and golden brown. It has cooled, obviously, since I'm holding the pan with no oven mitts and not screaming. Um, full disclosure, totally forgot to put the salt in when I mixed it up. So, realize that just a couple minutes after I popped it in the oven. So I just sprinkled some kosher salt over the top of it because it was still really sticky. So, we'll see how it goes. Um, there might be bits of it that are a little saltier than others, but it's really not a big deal. Um, if you forgot to put salt in it, I would not add it after it's been baked just because the salt would not stick and it would wind up, you would really truly get big bites of salt. Um, so if you were to forget adding salt, I would definitely not add it in at the end. But since we caught it just at the very beginning, it's no big deal. I'm gonna break it up into chunks. And you can use a spatula to do this if you want, but I'm just using my hands. This would now be the point that if you wanted to add some dried fruit, you would add it. Um, I usually just let my husband add raisins as he wants them. That way he can add however much he wants. Um, I used to put raisins in when I would break it up, but it takes up more room in our container and the container is not big enough for everything with the raisins. So I, it's also just a space practicality issue. If you were going to be adding in some dried fruit of any kind, you could add it in now and mix it up with your hands. So now that we've got this all broken up, I like to leave some larger chunks. So then you can use a spoon or you can use your hands. And I just like to keep it in a glass jar. Um, however, you can absolutely just keep it in a plastic bag. Um, 
mason jars, Tupperware, whatever works for you. So what you're looking for in a done granola is some nice crunchy caramelized pieces and then, um, but not wanting it to be so hard that you're basically eating a granola bar cut up into little bits. That's just too hard. So you want it to be cooked enough that it holds some of its bite once you put milk on it, if you put milk on it or if you put it in yogurt, but not so much that it like breaks your teeth because it's way too done. So when I get to the very end, I carefully pick it up and I just dump the rest. And the great thing about doing this on parchment paper is now you do not have to soak and scrape the pan because it is has pieces of baked on granola on them. So we've got our container of granola here. I don't know how long to tell you it will keep because it doesn't last long enough for it to go bad. But it would definitely keep for a couple of months. I would say six to eight weeks if it's in a really well sealed container. We'll definitely keep for that long. Um, in the past, when we were going through a lot more granola, I would make a double batch of this. If you were to do that, if you wanted to make a lot at one time and you don't have a convection oven, you would be having two sheet pans most likely. You just wanna switch them maybe halfway through. If you are making a recipe that requires um, some stirring, then you can just sort of swap them every time you stir just to make sure that you're getting enough um, of an even cook baking on them. So that is how you make granola. I will post this on our Tumblr page so that you can get the recipe. Again, just go ahead and use whatever you've got. So if all you have is oats and almonds, you can totally make granola. You can um, spruce it up just a little bit by adding some other things like I did today, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, shredded or shaved coconut, but definitely not a big deal if all you have is oats and one kind of seed or nut. So enjoy. I hope that you enjoy making this if you get a chance to and leave a comment if you have any questions or success that you'd like to share. Have a wonderful day.